And welcome to our digital campus. If you're new to our evening broadcast, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. Tonight, we will begin our theme on doubt. Our speaker for this evening is Brother Moss. I'll see you after the message.
needed rescue My sin was heavy When chains break and the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven Good evening. Welcome to our digital campus Bible study. We're glad to have you with us this evening. We recently spent quite a bit of time studying about faith. We pretty well established that scriptural faith is believing in and acting on the revealed will of God. This week, we are going to do a study about doubt. Now, most of us probably have more than a nodding acquaintance with doubt. It often seems to be a constant companion. It's uh, always shouting questions in our minds. How could God ever, well, pick one or, or maybe more. How could God ever choose me or use me or uh, love someone like I am? Why would God use me since brother or sister X, Y, or Z is, is available? Uh, they're much better. Uh, they're much closer to God. They're more spiritual than I am. Surely God has someone better or wiser or more talented that he can use. Can God do that? Will he? And a thousand other questions. Let's begin our search for an answer in, of all places, Faith's Hall of Fame, Hebrews chapter 11. One room, uh, one verse, has among its notables a, a group of surprise picks. Uh, surely the uh, pool of nominees was a little light for some years. 
Hebrews 11.32 uh, tells us, What shall I say, or more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak, and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and the prophets. Uh, the first person on the list is our subject tonight. Gideon was not only a man of faith, he was a man of doubt. Let's see if his doubt can teach us something about faith. Uh, we find his story beginning in Judges chapter 6. Gideon had doubt that was based in reality, in the reality of fact. When the messenger greeted him as a hero and declared that the Lord was with him, in chapter 6, verse 12, Gideon began to list the evidence to the contrary. Present conditions did not line up with past performance. The tales of the exodus from Egypt did not, in his perception, line up with their domination by Midian. Now, let me come aside from that. The, the angel did not argue history, or current events with him, but moved on to the next point. But since we're doing a study, I will point out that our perception of yesterday's miracle is often viewed through rose-colored glasses. The angel did not point out that a miracle comes only because the situation is so desperate that there's no other solution. He also did not point out that the Israelites griped, grumbled, and complained from before the first plague all the way to the promised land. Reality after editing is no longer fact. Never let the difference between what you are experiencing and some story you have heard color your confidence in God. Now back, the next instruction that I mentioned was go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. That's found in verse 14. Gideon replied, how can I? This kind of doubt is really not a questioning of the power of God but of our own usefulness or ability. Again, an aside, often our doubt is not really of the power of God, uh, but maybe of his choice of an instrument, us. I remember in 1973, my wife and I were on I-35, driving to Oklahoma City for some reason or another, and uh, she was taking a nap, and I was having a fervent, though silent, conversation with the Lord. I had recently been elected to district youth president and felt like I was in way over my head. I saw my well of ideas as dusty dry as the West Texas desert where I grew up. I was making what I thought was a good case that everyone from Glory's throne to the tabulating committee had made a terrible mistake that the district youth would suffer from. I'm a first generation Pentecostal. I pastored at that time one of the newest, smallest churches in the state. I may then still been still have been the youngest pastor in the district. And leadership is not a strength in my family. My people were mostly farmers and laborers. Now, my maternal grandfather was a county treasurer, but he died 10 years before I was born, so I didn't learn anything from him. Oklahoma, was in trouble. And after I got through whining and I was quiet enough to listen, 
The Lord began to fill my thoughts with so many ideas that the well became artesian. I just couldn't contain it. Among my memorabilia is this styrofoam book. Uh, I've had it obviously for many, many years now, but it's decorated with the theme and uh, of a statewide youth rally that we had. Uh, every time I look at it, it can help me to remember some of what we talked about on that trip down to Oklahoma City and some of the things that the Lord showed me. It was the centerpiece of a banquet table. We made a, a whole bunch of them. And the theme, the decoration, and many other things came from those miles when the Lord gave me, for me, Gideon's answer. Go with the strength you have. I am sending you. Then he said, I will be with you. And that makes all the difference. We need not be careful that lack of, or we need to be careful that lack of confidence in ourselves does not become interpreted as doubting God. Then Gideon had another question, which may have been as much for clarity as to allay his doubts. Uh, from verse 17, if you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is the Lord, or it is really the Lord, speaking to me. We often doubt our own perception. Was that God? Or was that my imagination? So the Lord gave him a sign, uh, burning up an offering that uh, Gideon had given, and, and then Gideon was afraid that he would die because it was the Lord. We're such a variable people up and down and get an answer and that just leads to more questions. Does that sound like anyone that you've seen in the mirror recently? And even after Gideon had met success in, in destroying an idol and sending out a summons to gather an army, he tested the Lord with the famous wet and dry fleece that you find the story of in verses 36 through 40. Again, this really looks like a tremendous faith in the ability of God. I mean, wet fleece with dry ground, dry fleece with wet ground, that's asking a lot of the Lord. And yet he was doubting probably his own ability to carry through with this assignment. Then to prevent boasting of their own strength and uh, to prove that God was really the one that was winning the battle, the Lord, by two simple tests, cut the army from 22,000 to 300. Now that would be a real faith builder. At that point, God sent Gideon to the enemy camp. In an echo from the latter part of that Exodus story, Gideon heard of the fears of his enemy as had the spies in Rahab's house. You'll find that story in chapter 7, verses 10 through 14. Gideon's experience recreated the answer to his question uh, about the Exodus. With both Egypt and Midian, they faced overwhelming odds. They were led by a man who did not believe in his own abilities. Both men had to have signs to convince them. Their weapons of conquest were not weapons of war. Moses had a shepherd's staff. Gideon had trumpets and torches. But both of them had God. The story of doubting Gideon should teach us to realize that a large portion of our doubting is not about the power or will of God. It's about ourselves. Be careful 
that you do not let your adversary suggest that you lack faith in God because you have doubts about yourself. Remember the mustard seed. It is enough. Let us pray. Dear God of Gideon and all of the unsure, I pray for your continued touch in our lives. Help us to be clear in our thinking so we may discern between a lack of faith in you and your word and about our own place in your plan. Lord, I know that years and experience only take us to new levels in this challenge. Be with us in all our days and guide us in your ways in spite of ourselves. As you have accepted the foibles of your children through the ages, I ask that you would be similarly merciful to us. We really want to be used in your kingdom. Don't hold our whining against us, but use us in spite of ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us this evening. And let me invite you to go to newarkupc.info. Uh, there you will find a card uh, encouraging yourself in the Lord. It lists some scriptures that you might be able to use that might be of help to you when you find yourself in a time of discouragement or doubt. And while you're there, you might leave us uh, a, a scripture that you have found to be of help to you in times of darkness or of problems. Lord bless you. Join us again tomorrow night. We'll see you then. Thank you, Brother Moss, for that message. Before you leave, we'd like to invite you to visit us at newarkupc.info, where you can partner with us in giving, submit prayer requests, and join a small group. You can also engage with us. Think about the doubts you struggle with and how God works things out in the end. When you are struggling with doubt, what scriptures encourage you? I like Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you go to our Encourage Yourself in the Lord card, you will find a list of verses that help you when you are feeling doubtful. And you can also share the scriptures that help you most in your time times of doubt. Thank you for joining us and we hope you have a good night. Bye!